Hello everyone and welcome to Outriders World Slayer. In today's video I'm going to share with you my solo Pyromancer build for Taria Gratar. So this build works very well for early levels that most people including myself are still are and scales very well without having so many apocalypse gear pieces. Personally I only have a weapon that's not the best and one armor piece. One warning before we start, although I don't use any new mods from the World Slayer expansion, I'm using quite a few tier 3 mods from the original game, so if you're a veteran player it's very easy to build it, if you're a new player you may need some time to grind the, the correct mods and find the correct pieces. However, I'm going to give you some alternatives until you find the pieces you need, so you can start going to Taria Gratar, getting used to the level, or you can also do expeditions which I do believe work very well with this type of build. So without any further delay, let's start with our skills, and we're using the hat trick for the Firepower Paramancer build, Feed the Flames, Ash Blast and Volcanic Rounds. This is the best skill for the firepower build, it ignores completely the armor and converts anomaly damage for your weapon, so yes, it's a mandatory, in my opinion, when you go for firepower, it decreases your damage by a lot. Feed the Flames is only here to just increase a little bit our survivability, give us back ammo thanks to our mods, and also increase our weapon damage thanks to our perks. Ash Blast is the best ground control and DPS tool, it has very good cooldown now that we have better cooldown reduction and it can hold the enemies by a long time, increasing survivability, damage output, debuffing the enemies, so these are the best options for beginning firepower build and they're easier to use. Let's have a closer look at the weapon and mods, as you can see only my weapon, not the best for the apocalypse mod I have and my chest is Almost the best in slot, I would wish I had bonus firepower instead of max health, however, this still works. If you have, for example, the other secondary attributes and the best mods in the chest piece or an armor piece, I would recommend to use it even if you have max health or anomaly power until you find a very good replacement. So let's have a look at each item individually. Usually I'm going for bonus firepower, cooldown reduction and then either close range damage or status power. However, because now we have very good cooldown reductions thanks to the increase of our gear, we don't have to go like this. Even bonus firepower, status power and close range damage are still acceptable. And you have to stack either close range damage or long range damage. I do recommend close range is easier for the Pyromancer compared to the long range. So yeah, stack this if you can. And status power help us with the duration of Ash and Vulnerable that we apply to all enemies. For now I'm using only epic pieces because I haven't found any good set with the stats I want. For the head I'm using something with bonus firepower, cooldown reduction, close range damage. Death Sentence, one of the best tier 3 mods. They increases weapon damage by 40% and anomaly damage by 30% so you can basically destroy the enemies with Death Sentence. Bloodlust has been reworked, now it's one of the best firepower mods. Critical shots increase your firepower by a lot and stacks up to 3 times. The chest piece and the only armor piece I have which is an apocalypse gear I has bullet absorption. This way we will never run out of volcanic rounds. Damage absorber in my opinion is a must. Firepower pyromancer is a little squishy and you will need the armor and resistance especially when you fight the last boss, the arbiter and although some other mods can provide overall a little more and stack more armor. This is better because you don't kill any enemies. You don't have to kill enemies to get this bonus. That's why I recommend it. Counter Hunter, one of the best tier 3 mods. 16% more damage against the elites. It was nerfed a little bit, but because we have the Pax trees, we have the Ascension levels. This was just deserved. If we have left all the original damage, we would destroy everything just in seconds. 
For the legs, I'm using something with bonus fire power, cooldown reduction, healing received. As you can see, I make some compromises in my gear. This is not the best in slot. I would change that for status power, close range damage, however, because it had bullet kindling, 12% extra damage against enemies afflicted by burn, which I do love for a pyromancer. Either I normally power pyromancer or firepower, this is one of the best mods. And sharp eye, which also has been reworked a lot of firepower for 5 seconds, stack up 3 times after you deal critical shots. So actually this and bloodlust are very useful even against bosses. Before that, for the new players you had to kill enemies, but now these are very good for firepower builds. For the gloves, I'm using something with bonus firepower, cooldown reduction, status power, ashes and liches and personal space. 12% extra damage for close range damage, for weapon damage and this is actually a little good because we don't have weapon leech in our weapon and we need to increase a little bit our survivability. I don't know if this is mandatory, I do like it against the Arbiter, we take a lot of damage, it helps you a lot to survive, even though it was nerfed, originally it was 40%, now it's 20%, it still helps a lot. And finally for the boots, we're using something with bonus firepower, status power and close range damage. Now ash increase rates is still mandatory, in order to affect a lot of enemies, in the area with the Ash Blast and freeze them in space, debuff them and everything. White Grip, this can be actually the tier 3 one, but with even the tier 1 is enough to just get all our ammo back, thanks to the Pax 3 now. Uh, if you can replace this with the tier 3, I will give you later some alternative options, but I'm using this now because this is the only armor piece I found. For the weapon, the Damascus Offering or an LMG, in my opinion, is one of the best options. Claymore Torrent, one of the best mods. We need critical damage, status power, skill leech. Now, you could replace, for example, skill leech for close range damage. However, Damascus Offering has the Claymore Torrent for AoE. Every two seconds, you can inflict a lot of damage. Fortress is, in my opinion, one of the best to increase our mitigation and damage. Thanks to the other tier 3 mods that were nerfed, we're going to see them a little bit. Now, improved weekend bullets is a, just a bonus to be there. Not the best, we would prefer this to be something like Fortress and to have an extra tier 3 mod, which I would recommend in case you find this something good, for example, Fortress or something else. And that's the Damascus offering. For the other two options, I have tried the Tactical Assault Rifle with critical damage, status power. Now, this is not the best. I preferred something with close range damage but I didn't found it also a normal enchantment not the best in slot I would prefer something else with dark sacrifice as you can see it was also nerfed it was 75% damage but now it's 25% weapon damage but it's still the best tier 3 mod for single target DPS for firepower builds it has a cost that's why I have it as a secondary option we are a little squishy as I told you with a pyromancer and when we deal with uh, mobs I don't prefer to have Dark Sacrifice on, but Dark Sacrifice is ideal when you deal with an Arbiter or something else. The sidearm is not important, I'm using a blue item, so I can upgrade it and have my average item level uh, higher. And I have shown you some tries, and as you can see, I'm always, or most of the times, one level average lower than the required, and I still don't have a problem to solo Taregratar and the Arbiter with this type of gear. And let's have a look why the Damascus Offering outperforms the Tactical Air without the ideal mods. It's because of the Pax Tree. Before that, let's have a look at the skills for the Pyromancer Tree. We're focusing on the Ashbreaker mostly, getting all the mods for survivability and damage. These are the two flex slots for the Incinerator and Cares of the Pompeii to further increase the duration of Ash. However, if you have trouble surviving against one versus one or against the Lich, Taking the second moth to the flame will help you for your survivability and the second talent you can get it for something like Magma Totem. All the others are mandatory, the moth to the flame and the Lich in Force because we have the essential levels, we still have pretty decent weapon Lich even though our weapon doesn't have it by itself. And we're focusing both for Marble Orchant and Trial for Ashes, that's why we have very good cooldown for the Ash Blast and of course the last talent 45% extra weapon damage for 10 seconds. Now let's have a look at the Pax tree, and we're focusing on the Gun Blazer. I have tested both the Ashen Regalia and Ashen Wake. This is okay for a little bit AoE, however, it's not mandatory. Without this, I still have the same timers and doing a lot of AoE thanks to our mods. And thanks to Ashen Regalia, however, I did find myself surviving much easier. 
you take 7% less damage, it's damage mitigation every time you kill a marked enemy for 6 seconds. This stacks up to 3 times. If you argue this is not useful for the Arbiter, this is also not useful for the Arbiter, so I do prefer Ars and Regalia for the 2 force or ability. So now we are very, very tanky and we're getting more damage thanks to the other perks. The next mandatory talent, the Hot Streak, increases weapon damage by 6% every time you hit a critical strike. Stacks up to 5 times, very good talent. Carbon Ammo, thankfully now the Pyromancer has magazine size increase by 200%. That's why I like the LMG, 300 bullets, the magazine, we cannot stop firing and we take full advantage of the next perk, the bullet frenzy. Shots from the assault weapon, including the LMGs, increase weapon damage by 3%. This effect stacks until you stop shooting. Thanks to the LMG's magazine size, you can of course take advantage with a tactical assault rifle and brain eater or a forged bullets. However, you need to find a better assault rifle that I have for for now, because the one I tested still it's got performed by the Damascus offering in terms of damage. Now for the ascension level, these are probably my favorite choice for all the builds. Anomaly damage. What does it mean? This actually scales with volcanic rounds, with the mods from the weapons, and the skill damage. So there is no reason for you to not take firstly anomaly damage. It's basically 10% extra damage for everything you do, apart from normal bullets. That's the only thing that doesn't affect anomaly damage. So for Pyromancer, for all the builds, you take first anomaly damage and then focus depending on the build. Now I'm getting weapon damage and weapon leech, so I can balance a little bit for damage increase and survivability. And after that, I'm going to focus on close range damage to further increase our damage. damage Critical damage, damage against the Lich, cooldown reduction, and after that I'm going to focus a little bit more on survivability and utility. So I'm going for something like skill leads for a little survivability, status power for utility, and then some survivability for resistance, elite mitigation, armor, health. You need a lot of time to level up ascension, so that's my priority for or that I recommend for this type of build. Let's have a closer look at the alternative options for the weapon mods. Now, the best single target DPS mod is, for now, still the Dark Sacrifice. Fortress, I do prefer it because when you face the regular mobs, it's better. You don't take damage, you lose a little bit for single target DPS, but you gain for the Claymore damage and a little bit of survivability. That's why I recommend it, especially if you have it with the Damascus offering, and you can use the Dark Sacrifice for the ideal tactical AR, probably something like that. My ideal scenario for this would be Claymore Torrent, Dark Sacrifice, and as I told you, Brain Eater. Or, in case you don't want to invest Brain Eater and you want to invest in Reforging Bullets, which can be better, we're going to take another mod like Fortress to further increase our single target DPS, or another Anomaly Damage mod such as Ultimate Storm Whip, which can make a little difference for single target DPS. In case you don't yet have access to very decent tier 3 mods, there are very decent tier 2 mods. For single target DPS, the Claymore is probably the best option because now the Storm Whip has 3 seconds cooldown compared to the Claymore that has 2 seconds cooldown, so for single target DPS, Claymore is still better. For AoE, Born Shrapnel is one of the best. Critical swords detonate an enemy's bone, so now it's even better, you don't have to kill the enemies, this has been reworked and it is a lot of damage, so I would take this for a little bit of AoE. For single target, as I told you, Claymore Torrent. Anomaly Chanman is okay if you have it already rolled in the weapon. Stormwave is still okay. We don't need improved vulnerable bullets or any other that uh, increase the status effects. Grave Digger's Frenzy is okay, it was nerfed a lot, but in my opinion, the top choices are Bone Shrapnel for AoE, Claymore Torrent and Storm Whip, an Anomaly Enchantment for single target DPS, or Brain Eater in case you don't want to lose a bullet so easily. But if you go for a tactical AR, you don't need Brain Eater for an LMG. For God's sake, you have so many bullets that you will never run out of bullets. Now let's move on to the armor mods. We're going to further increase in case you have more Apocalypse tier because there are so many good options. Many mods have been reworked and are excellent now to add it to your collection. 
you can replace the flame grasper tier 1 with a flame grasper tier 3 so you can enable absorption for two additional targets it's better in case you can add this instead of the tier 1 option king slayer is a very good firepower mod increases our firepower when you critical heal elites by as you can see a lot 125,000. one of the best to use it for the arbiter Anomaly Echo has been reworked finally, it's not as worthless as it was before, although it doesn't give as much uh, and firepower on Anomaly Power, it gives both. So if you have it as, let's say, an Apocalypse here, it's very decent, not the best in slot, but very decent if you find it. But now let's have a look at the Tier 2 mods, in case you don't have so many Tier 3 mods. Ashen Boost is one of the best, 12% increased damage against enemies inflicted by Ash. Unfortunately, as cleaner has been reworked and has a 3 seconds cooldown, although it usually had 1 and it would be usable now, I don't recommend it with, for 3 seconds cooldown, you can use other mods to increase your damage, so yeah, I don't like it so much now. Dam Dam Bullets increase by Assault Weapon damage by 12%, essentially by everything like um, Ash and Boost, so yeah, one of very good decent choice to include in your mods. Crit stack, it's also a decent choice in case you don't, still don't have access for tier 3 mods or other tier 2 mods. Extra bullet has been reworked finally. Instead of 10% increase magazine, now it gives 30%. Although now it's a little redundant for the Pyromancer. We have 200% increase magazine size. You don't need any extra 30%. So don't invest on this. Although if you have it and you're using a tactical AR or if you're using a sniper rifle, something like that, this is not the worst option, but it's still not the best. Reforging Bullet is a decent option if you're going for the Tactical AR version or if you want to finish off the Arbiter without using the Feed the Flames. Although, this is only once again when you're using the Tactical AR. You have more than enough ammo to finish off the Arbiter with the LMG, so this is optional in case you want to take advantage of that. And the other survivability mods for tier 2 mods that are good against mobs and not against the Arbiter or bosses are the protection of the flame. If you kill an enemy marked by the Pyromancer by you, it increases your armor air resistance by a fair amount and it stacks up to three times. Mitigation from death, it was nerfed. It usually gave more armor compared to damage absorber, but now it doesn't give as much ammo. You have to aim down the side, it's very situational. And I do believe damage absorber is still better option. Or if you have between the two, you can of course get the protection from the flame because it also gives you resistance increase instead of only armor. And finally, blazing ages is still okay to increase your armor. This is only when you find the initial pieces that have already rolled these mods and you cannot change them. Or if they are apocalypse mods, these are decent options. That's why I'm giving them to you. As far as the tier 1 mods, there aren't so many other options you can use. Abrasion can be good in case you go for a group to decrease the resistance of the enemies by 20%. Empowerment could be okay to increase your damage, so if you have this as an apocalypse here, it's not bad. Because compared to Extinguisher, I think it's bugged. It, it, I don't know, applies so little damage compared to Empowerment that just applies a lot of damage. This is not worth it because we don't have skill life leech and we don't want to use the Fiddy Flames to increase our damage by a lot or you don't have to go for less cooldown you have more than enough cooldown so all the other options are not the best so the rotation is very simple you just make sure you have volcanic rounds running 24 7 you're using ash blast on cooldown because thankfully you can use the skill while shooting that's why this combination is ideal you don't stop shooting you take advantage of your pack tree you still keep shooting the enemies, increasing your weapon damage, and when you go around 100 bullets, you just use Feed the Flames, or in case you want to heal, because Feed the Flames is ideal to heal yourself, restore ammo to the magazine, and immobilize and apply Ash to certain enemies. That's why we have it here, and the cooldown is very frequent, but you don't have to do it on cooldown. Just use Ash Blast on cooldown. Against the Arbiter, it's pretty straightforward what we're doing. We're making sure we have Volcanic Rounds, Ash Blast, and Feed the Flames. I'm usually using Feed the Flames when it's going to go for the second phase after you destroy one of his bars and he kneels down and he goes to that phase. Then I make sure I have a full magazine because I don't want to stop shooting. And that's why we're dealing, as you can see in the background, a lot of damage increase as long as we're shooting because of the Pax 3 increased weapon damage. 
and I'm just keep using Ash Blast to apply the debuff to the Arbiter and further increase our DPS. If you're a little fast, you can kill him before you reach the next phase and he does the AoE. In case he goes to the AoE phase, stop aiming down the sides, go to the safe spot here as you can see that it's not red, start moving around, keep shooting, keep using Ash Blast. In case you go to low health, then use the Feed the Flames to just heal yourself and you, you won't have problem surviving. You still deal a lot of damage while moving and you can finish him off very quickly. Just don't forget, at the time this video was aired, this still works. When you kill the Arbiter, don't quit out, don't travel to back. You have to go to the lobby, return to lobby. If you do that, you still have more tries remaining, you still spawn to the Arbiter and you can kill him up to three extra times. This is ideal to farm XP, mods and gear. So do that as long as you can. I will make a separate video just in case some people have missed that because for now, I believe this is one of the best options to farm gear and everything. After I have done this video and testing, I have found some gear. However, I wanted to test and demonstrate that this is possible with only purple gear and one or two apocalypse items. You don't have to farm apocalypse gear to go solo Taria Gretar. You can still do it. This is the power of the build. The more modes we will add then, the better weapons we find, if we find the ideal tactical AR, I believe we will destroy the Arbiter. I will make an updated video once I found all the armor pieces or I found a decent set because I have seen some good sets for the Bonfire Power Pyromancer for the new sets and I'm, I do want to test them how well they perform. And so that was it for today's video. I really hope this will help you to make your own variation of the Pyromancer Fire Pyro build for solo Taria Gratar, you can make the variations you like with the ascension levels, the Pax tree or the tree. And the better gear you find, the, the better this build will become. The more damage you do, the more survivability you have. You don't have to worry. Once you find the best tactical AR, I do believe you're going to destroy the Arbiter very, very fast. Until then, thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video. Extra thank you in case you stick around until the end. Feel free to like and subscribe for more upcoming videos for Outriders, World Slayer and other video games. And as always, I wish you all a wonderful day.